Hey guys, Travis Cook here of Learning How To Think and it's the 29th of September 2020. So to the, if you haven't already re uh, came across it yet, there, there is the lovely Test and Trace app that apparently has been downloaded by 10 million people already, supposedly. Um, I can't stress enough how much I advise against getting this app. It's literally like inviting the government into your front room for as long as you have the app. It's literally like inviting them there, putting them on a table, asking them to look at you and monitor you for everything you do. I mean, it's quite insane uh, that people do have downloaded this. I suppose many people are being forced into it. I don't know. Um, especially like NHS workers, it's quite, uh, they're critical for the survival of many people, the, the NHS workers. So they're being, I imagine they would be targeted to download this straight away, but I wouldn't, I don't know if it'd be forced upon them, it's probably still optional, I don't know. It'd be good to find out about that actually. But yeah, that is, that is just insane. And I mean, who the, f why would you download, why? Why would you want to be told to self-isolate? Can you imagine just looking at this thing like, oh, I only eight more days left before I can go outside. And I mean, check this out. Look at the, look at this. Look at the, this has got to be sponsored by, by fucking the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation or something. Like, they, they, they're really trying to push it out there. I think all of the papers have this uh, on the front page. And this picture was from a few days ago now. But it's just, oh my god. And they, it's opening up the, the way for uh, like COVID passports, uh, which eventually, you know, the end game, I guess, would be the vaccination passports where you can't do certain things unless you've been vaccinated. Uh, I don't think we're actually going to get to that point. I think we're going to have enough people awakened and there'll be something whether it's through the government or through the people, a combination of both coming together to stop this madness before we get to that point. But you can see it, right? It's fucking close. It's not far away. I mean, you even have Boris who was talking about, oh, yeah, so we can allow, you know, people to gather and sing together in, like, choirs and, and theatres and all this. But they have to have a a ticket to say they don't have COVID and that's relating to the tests. Again, I would advise against the testing because that's collecting your DNA. I mean, it's it's sort of being rolled out there en masse, but nobody's, you know, sort of talking about it because I guess, I don't know how many people think about the fact that they are storing your DNA. All of this data is being stored, all the DNA, and I wonder where it's going. Some people say it goes to China, I don't know. But it'd be collected, I imagine, by the World Health Organization, which essentially is China and Bill Gates. So fuck that. They can't. They ain't getting my data. Getting tested for me is is like only a one or two steps down from getting the vaccine. It's that much of an invasion of privacy. I, I would imagine. Like in in a normal situation, you would think you would be able to trust your health services. And um, you know, if I had to get a blood test because I thought I was you know genuinely sick and something was seriously wrong. You know, I would do it because, uh, you know, if it was in my life and death. But now, given the fact that uh, our governments have clearly been infiltrated, at least in part, it seems to be the medical side of things has been infiltrated. And um, I saw this on um, 4chan. And, okay, it's 4chan, the arse of the internet. But there are still some very intelligent and wise people out there. And sometimes when I'm looking through it, I just read something that sort of sticks out to me. And I'm like, okay, yeah, that was, that was kind of something. You're on, you're on the nail there. You, hit the, you hit, the, hit the nail on the head with that. So I'm just going to read this out to you. And of course, take it with a pinch of salt. I'm not saying this is true. But when I read this, the days after I've been thinking about it, just because it seems like a perfect summary of what's happened. So here we go. The reality is that Boris is probably trapped in his own office. He might be Prime Minister, but the civil service are the ones who carry out his commands. Common Purpose has been infiltrating top positions in the police, civil service, education, NHS and even the armed forces with woke brackets commie 
activists for over a decade now. These people are the ones creating the chaos. Boros is being fed bullshit by his advisors and having his instructions carried out badly, if at all. People who are taking their orders not from Downing Street, but from Beijing. By people who are taking their orders not from Downing Street, but from Beijing. This makes him look at like an idiot and a fascist at the same time. It's happening in a lot of countries, most of whom are intractable enemies of global communism and have the combined might to prevent their takeover. Our economy and social life is being deliberately disrupted so we will soon be bankrupt and unable to stop them buying everything at pennies on the pound with money we gave to them for cheap shit we don't need which ruined our own manufacturing base. They have been stockpiling gold ever since this pick related was published. You, you can't see the, the pick related, don't worry about it. This has been in the planning and covert stages for a very long time. Trump fucked up their plans and made them go for it before they were good and ready. The good news is this means we will probably still win, but at a horrific cost. It will teach us not to take the eye off the ball as far as totalitarian ideologies go. I expect the Allies to turn a beady eye on Saudi Arabia the moment the chink threat is dealt with, which is a good thing. So yeah, I mean, what do you think about that? I mean, it's from 4chan, you know, so you, it's, it's, you take it with a pinch of salt, but that just kept rolling over in my mind so much I felt like I had to share it because... I think he's actually correct on 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 that. It does. It, I've been saying it's like a, we have been we are under attack by the CCP, essentially. I mean, then you could trace it probably up to the globalists above that. And um, I'm sure anyone who's who's on my channel probably knows who they are anyway. Um, but yeah, that's essentially if you just trace it down. You got the CCP who has very cleverly infiltrated parts of our government and our society they, 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 they have no problem playing the long game they are very patient you can see uh, I watched this incredible documentary on uh, Mao and how he ran communist China back then and yeah you know they could have plans in the making for a decade um, so that shows you what we're up against right um, but however with all of this I do believe essentially what is happening on a more of a spiritual level, on a, a spiritual perspective, a higher perspective, people have to wake up. People have to wake up. The conditions are being created where it is so easy for people to start to question their reality because <laughs> it's gone fucking mad. And uh, question, perhaps there might be people in the government who don't have my best interests. And that's what started me off on my journey which led me on an incredible path of self-discovery and fascination and mystery and wonder as I tried to piece together what actually is this world all about that I had, and it's not clearly not what I've been told up to uh, throughout school and, and all of that. So the globalists wake more people up than I ever could on my own and, and, and any tr uh, person who's, you know, putting information out there, any truth seeker, uh, the globalists do an amazing job of waking more people up, so it's quite quite curious when you think about that, and uh, this is where I feel um, there is a part of the truth community, uh, especially here in the UK, like, you know, the idea of God has just been uh, sort of eradicated in, in many ways, but uh, there are still quite a few people that, um, that I speak to, and they have the the uh, you know the agnostic belief in things. And I'm not religious, and I guess you would class me as that as the agnostic. Um, but having faith in these times, because if you are already awakened, you already have an understanding of you know you don't just blindly trust the government and all of this sort of stuff. You're already on that path. Then it, for now, we just have to make it through this. Um, without getting too damaged by what humanity has to go through collectively. We just sort of have to stand back, stand to the side and just let humanity go through this and whoever wakes up, wakes up and whoever doesn't, unfortunately, I don't see a very pretty fate for them and it's quite sad because I'm saying this as members of my own family, I believe, will 
will be uh, on this on the path of destruction from not having woken up. I was actually shown this very, very clearly in one of my Amanita Muscaria trips. And I've I've written about these and I have uh, videos and everything. So you can check all that out if you're interested. But I remember seeing specifically what, what it would feel like if, it, um, you know, members of my own close family, my dear family, didn't make it onto the timeline where, you know, the, the evolution was happening or the, the positive timeline, which requires having to wake up. And I, I dealt with all the feelings and emotions that came with that. And now it's kind of like I'm seeing it play out firsthand because although I don't think many, I don't know, there'll be some members of my family, I think that would take a Bill Gates sponsored MNRA vaccine that will do, I don't even know what it, will, what it actually could do to the human body, especially in the long term. Uh, but that's kind of, I feel that's kind of where we're at right now. It's like, if you can't think for yourself, if you don't wake up, then it's like there's a fucking cull happening right now. And it begins, I guess, with the mask and, and, um, and then I guess the end thing is the vaccine. If you, you haven't woken up yet at all by the time the vaccines are being rolled out, if they are being rolled out and... There may be clean vaccines. It might not be all just Bill Gates sponsored terrible MNRA vaccines that are going to really fuck you up. There may be clean ones, uh, especially maybe coming out of Trump's warp speed. Uh, but I, for one, don't want to take any regardless of where they're coming from. Uh, but that could be it. You know, if you're just still not awake and you're like, oh, yeah, the government says I should get this vaccine and Bill Gates is a good guy. I trust him. He's clearly not Satan. I'll take his vaccine. I have no idea what's in it that hasn't been trialed for the long term. Well, then what can you do? I mean, it's really sad to say. And I, I love that we don't have to do that. And we can actually more in a soft way go into a to, to a golden age. But I don't know exactly how it's all going to play out. It's pretty uh, there's it's pretty complicated for us mere mortals down here to try and figure out. But I do my best. And it's quite interesting to sort of play with these perspectives and uh and see what happens, but I just thought I would I would throw some moralizing information in there because at the end here because it is a spiritual battle, and if you what basically uh, the demoralization is being thrown at us so hard, but if we can remain in true in ourselves, have faith, then we will get through this so much more. Uh, easier because even in amongst all of this chaos I imagine it's still possible to manifest an amazing reality and this is literally like the timeline split manifesting itself before our very very fucking eyes and I remember reading about this a few years ago like how could there actually be such a timeline split how could reality start to do that and it feels like this is happening right now it actually feels some people are going to be in literal hell, literal hell, believing everything the government's saying, terrified, traumatized, because they're believing in all this stuff. And then others are going to be rising up to the challenge, being, becoming stronger in themselves, seeing the opportunity to be of service, to help people who are in this, tight, this dark time. And all of the divine grace and all of the divine blessings that come with following such a path is all is open to anyone who chooses to to, to 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 take the path. And I'm a firm believer that the more you devote yourself to service to others, the more you build up your connection to the divine, the more divine protection you have. And I'm very, very curious as what the upper limits of such protection could actually be. I'm reminded of a very interesting talk by Bruce Lipton where he talks about there's this religious group that get themselves into such a frenzy of religious belief that they can drink poison and it will just not affect them because they're that trusting in God. And I mean, that must take a lot of something. I don't know what you want to call it, faith, uh, to be able to actually do that confidently. Um, I can't say that I could do that just, you know, like that. It probably doesn't happen just like that. It probably takes a lot of practice or preparation and belief in God to, to get to that stage. Uh, but it's very, very interesting. But that shows that, that, that to me is an example of how powerful divine protection can be. But you have to believe in it. 
And I can, there's no way I can ever tell anyone, hey, you should believe in God and have faith in God when they don't have it. It's just, I don't think it works like that. It has to come from the inside. But this is to anyone who may have a little bit of that inside them already, but hasn't quite activated it to the level that it could be. And uh, it can just really help you navigate this world in these times that we're in. Just have that internal light, become that internal lighthouse in this crazy COVID storm that we're in. Because it doesn't seem like it's letting up just yet. And again, tomorrow we will see what happens in the parliament. Because uh, now the option isn't there to amend the coronavirus act. It's either more of this coronavirus act madness coming from our government. Or it stops right here tomorrow. So I'm very curious to see how it goes. And either way, ultimately... I know it's being done for the good of humanity in this higher perspective because uh, just to have everything rolling along nice and smoothly and swimmingly with no bumps and, and all of that, but then nobody actually fully realises their true power. Nobody really does wake up. Nobody's presented with the choice for having to choose between good or evil, fear and love. A lot of this is fear and love, right? I mean... How many people are complying out of fear? How many people are wearing the masks out of fear instead of having love and faith? Yeah, very interesting to think about, huh? So I think I'll leave it at that before I, I ramble on too much. But I thought I'd just throw that out there because, uh, yeah, moralization. We need to be strong, guys. If we're going we're gonna to make it through this. I don't know if all of us are going to make it through it, though. I really hope we do. But, uh, yeah, have faith, guys.